A quick new idea, daily, from the world's greatest TEDx talks. I'm your host, Atosa Leone, and this is TEDx Shorts. One of the great medical developments of the 20th century was the discovery of antibiotics. While this has saved countless lives over the last century, now antibiotic resistance is a public health concern. How did we get here? Koylan Noonan is a scientific advisor to the Alliance to Save Our Antibiotics. Koylan says this resistance has resulted from antibiotic use on farm animals. And in today's talk, he looks at what we can do to ward off potential disaster. Top medical experts are talking about a possible antibiotic apocalypse, or Armageddon. The World Health Organization is saying we are facing a post-antibiotic future. Antibiotic resistance is already increasing. If we don't take action, it's forecast that deaths due to antibiotic resistance will increase from 700,000 a year worldwide to 10 million a year by 2050. This will be more than the current numbers of deaths due to cancer. And there will be huge economic costs, too. Between now and 2050, antibiotic resistance could cost the world economy $100 trillion. But this golden age of antibiotic discovery has now ended. And in the last 30 years, we have failed to discover and develop a single new family of antibiotics. That's none in 30 years. And this is why there is now so much concern about antibiotic resistance. So what is antibiotic resistance? Well, we need to understand that it's bacteria that become resistant, not people or animals. Most of the resistance in human infections is probably due to the medical use of antibiotics, but not all of it. There is also also clear scientific evidence that the farm use of antibiotics contributes significantly to the problem. And this is happening even with some of the most important antibiotics we have, including last resort antibiotics used to treat life-threatening infections. So what happens is that when the animals are fed antibiotics, some of the bacteria in their guts can develop resistance. And then at slaughter, the carcasses can become contaminated and the bacteria end up on meat. And then we handle raw meat or eat undercooked meat, these bacteria can be transmitted to us and contribute to resistant infections. Also, When manure or slurry from animals fed antibiotics is spread on the land, the crops and drinking water can be contaminated, and we will then receive these bacteria and residues. Antibiotics have helped treat serious infections like tuberculosis, pneumonia, septicemia, but they've also contributed to a wider revolution in human medicine. Patients undergoing surgery or cancer chemotherapy are often more prone to serious infection and may require preventative antibiotics. Without antibiotics, all of this could be under threat. So antibiotics have been of huge benefit to human health, but they haven't benefited animal health in the same way. Sometimes antibiotics are used to treat individual sick animals. And this can be a completely appropriate use of antibiotics. But in intensive farming, antibiotics are used uh, for mass medication as a productivity tool. Growth promotion has now been banned in Europe and in many countries around the, the world. Preventative antibiotics enable some farmers to keep very high numbers of animals, particularly pigs and poultry, indoors in highly intensive conditions. And these conditions are highly unhealthy, uh, but yet they still get rapid growth. But antibiotics increase productivity in other ways. Pig farmers will sometimes wean their piglets very early so that the sow can produce another litter as quickly as possible. But this causes the piglets to develop diarrhea, 
that antibiotics are used to control. So antibiotics have enabled us to push intensively farmed animals very hard, but they've also enabled a huge increase in global meat consumption, particularly in the consumption of meat from pigs and poultry, which tend to be the most intensively farmed and receive the highest levels of antibiotics. Global consumption of chicken meat has increased over 10 times since the 1960s. So what can we do about this? Well, a small number of countries in Europe have already banned routine preventative antibiotic use. And some others, like the UK, are starting to reduce it and to phase it out. The World Health Organization has recently called for a global ban on preventative antibiotic use. And currently, the European Union is considering a ban along those lines. And the really good news is that when we make significant cuts to antibiotic use, rates of resistance tend to stop increasing and even start falling again. But many of these cuts are still too small and too slow. And if we want to make really big cuts to farm antibiotic use, we need to improve the way we farm animals so that their health and welfare is given more importance. We will also need to eat less meat and less dairy. We need to avoid putting pressures on our doctors to prescribe antibiotics unnecessarily. But we do need to put pressure on our governments to act. The resistance problem is global. Bacteria spread globally. We are all connected through international travel and through the international trade in meat. So we need international action and cooperation. We need to be setting ambitious targets for reducing antibiotic use. We need a global treaty like we have for greenhouse gas emissions. We all want to avoid an antibiotic apocalypse, so we need to act now. The TEDx talk you just listened to was recorded at a TEDx event in Exeter, Devon, England. All TEDx events are independently organized by volunteers who believe in TED's mission of ideas worth spreading. Special thanks to the organizing team at TEDx Exeter. Visit TED.com slash TEDx Shorts to listen to the full talk and learn more about TEDx Shorts. I'm Atosa Leone. Thanks for listening and see you next time. <laughs>